You're listening to Got Tech, the podcast with your hosts, Eric Geis and Nick Johnson. Welcome back to Got Tech, the podcast. This is episode 121, call 12, easy to use, AI powered, Ed tech tools. In this episode, we'll discuss 12 awesome websites and apps that use AI to power what they do. We'll also share some ideas for how these tools can be used in your classroom. This is another episode you don't want to miss. Check it out. I just want to throw something out there because I know when people see AI and I'm included that we think that this is going to be an episode about super complicated tools that are super hard to implement into your classroom. That's not the case. Hang on, hold tight. When we get to segment two, these are a lot of these are just plug and plays. So you just copy and paste something in or you upload a file and it does something awesome with it. So just hold on there. But before we get there, let's get into some updates. Uh, Teach Better Conference is right around the corner, October 14th and 15th. I will be there. I will be presenting an EdTech throwdown with a much more challenging person than Nicholas Johnson. I will be taking on the person that I am most scared of in this world next to, I don't know, Eleanor Roosevelt. That's the first name that came to to mind. Maybe I'm not even scared. I'm not sure. But she's throwing a lot of shade out there. You should be scared. At first, I was offended until uh, until I remembered who you were going up against. And, uh, you know, we're talking about Stephanie Howell, of course. And it's awesome that she's going to meet you out there and do this. It's awesome that you get to go up against her. And personally, I can't wait to find out who wins. It's I mean, really, it could be anyone's anyone's game. She is by far a uh you know the most worthy opponent you could have in there besides maybe myself so best of luck to you that's all i'm I can gonna say. agree to disagree i think <laughs> i think she could probably take both of us down but i am not scared and i am not going to run from these twitter tweets that say that you know i'm second fiddle i guess that's that's a thing i'm second fiddle what am I second fiddle to? Do I play music? I do not. So yes, I would be second fiddle. So that doesn't even make sense. But I'm going to throw some shade her way on Twitter. All in fun and good games, especially when I know I'm going to win. So that's the first thing. It's going to be a great time. Make sure that you check that out at the Teach Better Conference. If you're going to be there, make sure you say hi. Uh, it's, it's awesome to meet people that listen to podcasts and to let us know how we're doing and also come to the presentation and vote for me please we'll also be there for podcasters row or i will be there for podcasters row i'm very excited about that i get to sit down with some listeners and some people attending the conference and we get to just have a conversation about what we learned or some takeaways from the conference so that's awesome and our second thing is the free link spring virtual conference we put the link in the show notes you still have time to sign up nick and i will then battle it out uh there for who has the best at tech tools i'm not sure what our category is yet for that i think it might be something with blended learning uh, but, you know, we'll figure that out, and it'll be a new list of tools. So it would be two different types of throwdowns here. Yeah, a lot of really great PD stuff coming up. Um, we also have in the works, um, you know, we've tried off and on over the years to do various video series that come out on our YouTube channel. And, you know, sometimes we keep it up for a little bit little bit of time. But, of course, podcasting is, is not our, our day job. We, we are full-time educators, and both of us have families and are involved in lots of stuff. So it's one thing that's kind of eluded us as, like, something that we are able to do on a consistent basis. But we're trying to bring it back because it is always something that uh, we're interested in. So you can expect, perhaps, in the coming weeks to see some uh, new video creations put out there by Got Tech the Podcast. These are some sessions that we're curating for teachers in various things to sort of educate them on how to use stuff, how to use ed tech tools like Canva, something we bring up all the time. And um, those recordings might become available. So there's nothing to check out yet, but I wanted to tease that for anybody who is thinking about maybe following us in some different places. And, and YouTube is one spot you can do that. Find us there, of course, at We Got Tech. 
This podcast is a proud member of the Teach Better Podcast Network. Better today, better tomorrow, and the podcast to get you there. Explore more podcasts at www.teachbetterpodcastnetwork.com. Now let's get back to the episode. I think with that, is it time to get into some of these AI tools? Yeah, I think it's time, and I think I'll start off with uh, Gradescope. Gradescope helps you seamlessly administer and grade all of your assessments. Whether it's online or in class, you can save time grading and get cl- get a clear picture of how your students are doing. So one thing I like about this AI instant, not instant, but AI grader, is that it comes in four easy steps. The first thing is, is scan your student work in if it's paper. And then after that, you're going to grade the submissions. So you're going to set a rubric up on the sidebar. And you're going to say if this math problem is worth three, so how you set it up, uh, the steps to get to your answer, and then your final answer. Maybe there's three points there. You could put it in there. And as you view each one, you could put in the score there, and you could also give some detailed feedback while maintaining consistency within each uh, student's uh, assessment there. So what I'm saying here is if question two, everyone has question two, uh, if you write some feedback and then later on you realize that you forgot something with that feedback, you can go change it and then it will automatically update on all the other students' uh, question two. Or if you had to change an answer because you made a mistake and the students got it right, same thing can happen there. After you're done with that, step three is to send and export the grades. Uh, they do um, they do work with a lot of LMSs, so you can instantly throw your grades over into some of the element. LMSs that they implement into, or you could have your own grade book online within their system. And then the last thing is you get detailed analytics. So get per question and per rubric statistics to understand how your students are really doing. So if it is a digital assessment, you just upload them. That's super easy. If it is a paper assessment and you want to put them in, you could put them in uh, just by scanning in the work into a digital file and throwing them in there yeah this is this is crazy this is a a giant tool and i'm not sure how it's eluded us for so long if we haven't mentioned it before it's been long enough that i've forgotten about it but there's a lot of people using this thing and it looks really really powerful it looks like you can do some incredible stuff the you know what really impresses me of course is the and i'm not trying to shoehorn this in the connection to our episode here but the ai component where it'll actually like automatically look at the types of answers students are submitting and and this includes handwritten stuff so it's scanning a lot of the handwritten work that typically you just you know a human has to see um, and it can recognize similar chunks of writing so if you're a math teacher and you know the students are submitting some calculations that they've written out it's going to recognize students that have written similar things for question three and it's going to put all of those similar responses together so you can grade them hopefully a similar way. So it's doing a lot of that thinking for you that otherwise is is honestly like really super taxing. So this is what makes Gradescope super special to me. It's got, if you want to check out their website, they have a whole little you know, thing there about how you can grade in these different subjects that are typically very difficult, uh, like physics, math, chemistry, biology, engineering, computer science. They've got a whole coding thing, um, which works really well for, you know, AI to kind of look over because code fits in certain categories and boxes and things should be written out a certain way. So uh, this is really, really cool. And I would highly recommend it for anyone that has a little bit of time to invest in a very exciting new tool. And I will tell you, we started off with one of the most complex tools on the list and it's not that complex so hang tight we're going to get through some easy ones uh nick do you want to grab the next one yeah i'll give i'll give you guys a, a nice fun one something we've brought up before called word tune it's really really great deserves to be mentioned a bunch of times uh word tune has a website you can head to wordtune.com to test out what they do but there's also an extension that you can add to your chrome browser uh and uh, you know it'll that will incorporate if you're writing a Google Doc or typing up an email and, and use this powerful AI tool. What, what 
exactly does it do if you are writing a sentence and you just can't get the structure of that sentence to sound correct and you've tried and you've tried and you've thought about it for a couple minutes and it's just you're not getting there wordtune will rewrite that sentence for you and suggest some different options so here's the you know the example i usually give is on their website they have a little box where you can type in a sentence and i just copy pasted something from their own website which is get a feel for what wordtune can do exclamation point nothing wrong with that sentence but maybe you want to change it up So I copy pasted it in and I click on their rewrite button and I get some options like see what WordTune can do or check out WordTune's capabilities. Try WordTune for yourself. These are all secondary fantastic options that you could substitute out uh, if you are having a hard time coming up with something different yourself. The only thing I usually have to mention with this, just because I feel obligated to, is to kind of be careful. And that's with any of this AI stuff, because it does, I think, especially for students, you do sort of run the risk of people's brains now come to lean too much on that. You always want to make sure that your students are trying to write something themselves first. So maybe a couple words to them about using it responsibly and not letting WordTune, you know, construct all your sentences, because that's not very good for your time and productivity either you want to be able to do most of that writing yourself and WordTune is just kind of there to get you unstuck when you are stuck in your writing yeah I love WordTune and for anyone that says that this is close to cheating or this is getting something else to do the work for you and things like that I I really think the value in this tool is by having students be able to look at the different ways you can write a sentence and then choose which one that is the best sounding not as wordy it's clear to the point things like that but I mean this world is about figuring out how to make things easier so I've see this as a skill for students. I don't see it as a plagiarism thing or anything like that. I see students using a tool that will benefit them for something beneficial, like what they might be working on. It's going to make it look, sound great, and it's going to provide students with exposure to those word usages. Yeah, that's actually, that's a, what you just said is a better way to put it. You know, WordTune is valuable as a teaching tool because the things that you're seeing WordTune suggest you ideally you would then incorporate those into your own writing so I'm glad you pointed you pointed that one out for us all right I'm gonna get into my next one super easy it is a phone app Uh, it will work on Android iOS and Chrome it's called iScanner now iScanner Nick I believe you use one called cam scanner and I always found Cam Scanner to be a little clunky and has pop-ups and, and all that stuff. Well, the good news with iScanner is that it's ad-free and it's trusted by over 80 million people worldwide. Now, when I took a picture of, it was a photograph of my son, I threw it on top of a table and I took a picture and I didn't want all the, the noise in the background, the table print you know, that was underneath in it what's cool about this one is it automatically has a snap border so when you have that picture on top of the table it will give you a white outline around that that border and then it will blow it up and make it i don't know kind of seem like you just took a picture of that picture or that document that you're looking at so check out eye scanner this could be used in the classroom in multiple different ways For example, sometimes I'm out on hall duty, a student comes up, asks if they can have, uh, you know, a copy of something. And I'm not next to a copier. I'm on my last one. I'll just take a picture of it, send it to the person digitally. It's also great for providing an answer key. So maybe the students are working on it and you check a student's work and it's all correct and you don't have an answer key, you could just go ahead and hit iScanner, scan it, and that's gonna make a PDF and throw it straight up onto your website so the kids can check their work. Something like that, so this is a great one. Here's a, I use these types of things, and you're right, I do use Cam Scanner, but um, yeah, the ads are, are rough. Cam Scanner is definitely trying to make as much money as possible, which I get, they have an awesome, awesome service, but the, it is, it does 
kind of require you to click around some of those things and it, it gets difficult to use. So I'm excited to hear about iScanner because as far as you know, productivity goes, one thing that I am doing more and more these days is I don't want any paper. You know, things that we used to run on paper in school and at, in our district, there is still some stuff that flows on paper, forms you got to fill out and actually physically hand to one of the secretaries or something else. I'm trying to get rid of that as much as possible. And I have a good example of this. At the end of the, each school year, we get, um, I forget what it's called, almost like a receipt or a budget order type thing. And it lists all of the classroom supplies that we were allowed to order that year that are supposed to come in over the summer and our, our job with this is to keep it until September we get this piece of paper in like May so we're supposed to keep this until September at which point we find it again cross check that all of the equipment that has come in over the summer that was on this original piece of paper is there physically sign it and then walk it down to you know whatever office it's supposed to go to that's a surprisingly tall order to keep a piece of paper for that many months then find it again and know to sign it and bring it back down it's uh, it's tough for people and and I I know for sure that most teachers just flat out don't do it and then it's that person's job to track down all those people so for things like this these pieces of paper that I'm supposed to keep but just look at three months down the road six months down the road what I started doing was scanning them with cam scanner or maybe now eye scanner and I scan it in email it to myself and then I forward myself that email as a schedule send for I think I did this particular one I'm talking about for like I don't know September 10th or something so I don't have to think about it I don't have to keep the piece of paper my brain completely forgets that it even exists and then magically on September 10th I get my schedule send email that I sent to myself three months ago and there's that scanned image of this budget form and sometimes in the email I'll even put directions to myself like hey don't forget to sign this and bring it back to so and so and it just takes a lot of that stuff off my plate that's lingering in the background and is a cool use of uh, something like this if you're not running part of your day in this way so that's a good one I'll also add that if you've got an iPhone the notes app can do this too so if you just open any new note, uh, I think one of the options as you open that new note is to scan and it will do what iScanner does and what CamScanner does. It does not have the quality. It comes out a little bit blurrier than the, the CamScanner ones do and I'm expecting the same for iScanner. But um, the Notes app has something similar to this if somebody wanted to, um, wanted to check that one out. So do you like my productivity idea there? Yeah, that, that was great. Yeah, I'm, pr I'm proud of that one. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll get into the next one here, too, which I think we actually mentioned maybe in our most recent episode, but it's, it's really cool. It's also the newest tool to go up on our side website, myatechbundle.com. So if this sounds good, you could head there and check it out. It's called wow2.ai, and it is a video creation tool, a tutorial video creation tool and it helps anybody who's in sort of like a training role with educational videos that viewers can listen to. You know, and there's lots of things that can do this that we talk about all the time. Pretty much we're getting into like the screen capture recording tools here, but you know, WowTo has some AI aspects of it that are a little bit special. Uh, one of them is that you don't really have to know how to use it at all. Once you activate it, you just perform whatever actions on your computer screen that you want to show people how to do. Um, there's no real training with the tool itself. As you're doing things and clicking on things, it is recording and capturing uh, what you're doing in that video format and sort of automatically putting everything in place. Um, the AI comes in with some of the voiceover. You, you don't even have to talk. It's automatically going to you know, describe what you're doing. There's a, a script element where you can type things in if you want to, but it's gonna do that voiceover for you, which is really cool. Uh, that's gonna include subtitles, and my favorite part is it's gonna include those subtitles in, I think, how many languages? I forget what they said, but a ton of different languages depending on who's watching it, and people can select that. So very, very, very cool. The other thing you can do is if you make a mistake or something changes over time, you do not have to re-record the entire thing. You can just sort of go edit out 
or, or change the portion of your tutorial that doesn't apply anymore, where, where something has, um, has changed. So there's a lot of really great stuff here. And I, I think, you know, building in AI with tutorial creators like this is, is probably the wave, of, wave of the future and something that, you know, I'm, I plan on getting more into as, as we go forward as tech coaches and someone who does this, you know, you're trying to teach people how to do stuff. As a classroom teacher, you can imagine all the times where you are showing your students how to do things, maybe an online simulation. Maybe they are composing their own piece of music using some online website and you want to create a tutorial to show them how to use it. You know, there's, there's tons of ideas there. And wow to might be, a, might be a good option for you. Yeah, this is another fantastic ad, not only to the podcast, but to my Tick Bundle. Make sure you go over there, check it out. Uh, I'm going to get into my next one, and we have quite a few on this list that help, uh, you know, a lot of our students with uh, special needs. And this next one will help that population, but other students too. I think it's very valuable for us to have ways to go and play back notes, something that's going to automatically generate notes. You could go back, easily searchable, things like that. And this is what otter.ai does it empowers you with real-time accurate notes that are stored in a central location that is secure searchable and accessible to people that are working together in this collaborative space so it allows i think the searchable is the key here because if we use this for example in our zoom meetings or google meets and we have a whole bunch of them. It could get lost in there. But if we have the ability to search for chunks of information, so if I did five science episodes or five science lessons through Zoom or through something else, and they were all on photosynthesis, but I just wanted to know about the Calvin cycle. I could type in Calvin cycle, it'll pop up, and then I can automatically go to that spot in the notes. But otter.ai, I think, is a game changer, especially for um, students who have trouble connecting content, you know, what they hear and what they kind of grasp a hold of is in two different wavelengths. And I know I can relate to this. So check out Otter AI. Yeah, that sounds like an awesome one and something that kids are finding more and more difficult is that, you know, the note taking aspect. So. Uh, that's one that I'm going to be checking out personally. Um, as is this next guy. This is new to me, and it's called Quillbot, and you're the one that found this, but I'm stealing it from you because it kind of goes along with what I shared a couple minutes ago. It's it's sort of like an alternative to WordTune, although unless WordTune has this and I've missed it, I think pretty sure Quillbot is going to go to the next level in that if you have a sentence and you copy-paste it into Quillbot's you know their little uh, the field where you can type in something it not only rewrites it for you you can also ask it to rewrite that sentence with various i don't know what the maybe contexts or types of writing in mind so here's what i mean um you can type in a sentence in the the free one the, the free version of this which anyone can do is just go there and it's called standard i typed in a question what do you think about this new game and if it's going to paraphrase that for you and suggest what are your thoughts on this brand new game it's not super different but i don't know if my sentence was one that really has a lot of different ways to say it here's the cool part you can then click away from standard onto fluency which is going to rewrite it ensuring that the text is readable and free of any errors it's not just going to rewrite it for you it's going to make it better and a little cleaner you can then click on formal, which is gonna paraphrase it in a more professional way, something that maybe you're gonna email out to the entire staff, uh, something like that. You can click on simple, and it's gonna present it in a way that is you know, more simplified, fewer words, something more people can understand. It's got a creative option, which is gonna, this one, some of these you have to sort of pay to unlock and upgrade. Uh, but these are really intriguing to me. They can create a creative rewriting and expanded rewriting, which will increase the sentence length, and then a specifically a shortened one. 
So I guess shorten is, is somehow different than simple, uh, simplify, but this is really, really cool. And even if you just use the free options that you don't have to upgrade uh, in order to use, this is, uh, you know, sort of takes what WordTune does to the next level. So Quillbot, I'm a fan. Yeah, I think uh, just listening to you a little bit, shorten and simple are two different things. Shorten is, you know, fewer words. Simple is probably easier, you know, lexile. Right. So, yeah, it's an awesome one. I'm super mad that you stole it from me. <laughs> you can talk about it again no, if you really want it, to. No, it's, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it's all right. I, I put Geist next to it, you know, claiming my territory, and he just put a three-letter word not in front of it and <laughs> you, then took it. You can steal one of mine if you really want to. It's, it's all right. <laughs> we're, we're good. Uh, I'm going to go into another one that I could see as being highly beneficial, which is Speechify. This works for Chrome, iOS, and Android. Uh, there is a free version. There's a premium version. I think the free version offers a lot. So when we look at Speechify, uh, you, for the free version, you can listen to any text uh, anywhere. So as long as it's digital, uh, they'll have someone reading. There's 10 standard voices with the uh, free version, but if you have a PDF online or a website, you can uh, use this and uh, we'll start reading what's on the PDF or website. Uh, for the free version, you don't have speed variability options. Whereas uh, if you had the premium, you would be able to speed it up up to five times faster the speed. So basically, if you took my voice and you increased it by five times, I would sound like a regular human being, I guess. Uh, you know, speaking so slow. Uh, anyway, uh, the free version does a lot. You just don't have, you have 30 plus high quality natural reading voices for the premium versus the 10 for free. Uh, here's a big one, 20 different languages. So it could read in 20 different languages. I could see this being a great product to invest in for ESL students. And what's cool with the premium one is that you can scan and listen to any printed text. So just take your phone and scan it and you're off to the races. So uh, there are some benefits of the premium, but like I said, I think the free version does fine for most of our needs. This next one is um, is really cool. It's going to meet the needs of a specific population, so this is not for everybody. Uh, but who it's going to help, I think it's really going to help those people. I'm talking about an app this time that you can download uh, called Lookout Assisted Vision. This is really, really awesome. This app is designed for people with low vision or blindness. So, um, you know, keep that in mind if you know of anyone like that or if you have students with this, with these sorts of um, disabilities, because this is, this is very cool. What it's going to do on your phone is, and there's a bunch of different modes that it can cycle through, but it scans the screen of the phone and it can describe to you, so it's going to speak out what it sees using a variety of different methods. So one thing it's going to do is um, you can actually use the phone's camera. So literally pointing your phone around the room, it's going to pick up that there's a, you know, a microphone sitting on the table in front of you and it's going to say the word microphone or describe it. Very cool. Uh, it's going to look at the, like I said before, look at the screen and tell you what is being shown. So if you're scrolling through like a Google image search, it can read out what each of those pictures is. It's got a text mode. So it can scan images and stuff on the screen for any text and read those. Um, you know, they specifically talk about things like money. It's going to scan money and tell you how much money is there, which is really helpful in life. Um, and then just documents. So that from the teaching side, this is what really caught my eye. You can pull up that document and it's going to read it out loud for you. What I really like is the ability to do this on a phone. And we've been struggling just recently to try and get um, a tool for a Chromebook that will read text. And there's lots of them out there, but you know, the issues on the Chromebook when it's a school issued thing is a lot of them are blocked or they're not working fully or they aren't working today because the permissions changed. Uh, but if it's okay with your school policies, and this is something that the student can have on their own personal cell phone, which at least at the higher grades, they're probably gonna have, 
you can maybe get around that or you can at least tell this family or that student about it as something that they can use. So it's called, again, Lookout Assisted Vision. You can check it out, see if it's something you're interested in downloading if you know somebody who this might help out. So you took another one of mine. I see. Uh, I'm going to just do my last two just so I could get them out of the way. <laughs> Before I take Before those you as well. Take them. I'm not saying that because your last two aren't cool. Right. I just uh, think these two go together. Yeah, fair enough. All right. So my next two, one is called Go Art by Fodor, F-O-T-O-R. Uh, it's goart.fodor.com. And Dream by Wombo. These are both uh, AI art tools. Uh, one Fotor, or Fodor, uh, allows you to edit photos. And something that I'm interested in is creating NFT-like images. So non-fungible tokens tokens, uh, is what I'm talking about there. It's uh, part of the crypto space, uh, an NFT space basically just taking an image and cartoon making it kind of like a cartoon or you know like a digital art version uh dream by wombo does the same thing uh the difference between the two i think photo photo uh ed, has a lot more editing photo type changes to it uh where dream by wombo is more of an ar uh, AI art generator. So if you type in um, any type of combination of words, I believe this is what, what I'm talking about. Yeah. So if, for example, I'm typing in a enter prompt and I'm just putting in alien there. And then you just hit what type of art style do you want? Retro futurism, analog, paint. I'm going to go with paint here. There's several others. And I'm going to hit a cr hit create there. And now it is making an art um, to my specific style based on an alien. So I just made it. It's pretty cool. And then from right there, you have the ability to publish and also connect it to a NFT wallet, which is pretty cool. So you could just go through the process very easily to make an nft right within this website this is it's a lot of fun especially dream by wombo we were playing around with this uh together before the record today and it's just it's just cool it's fun to play around with i'm doing one what, what did i just try uh i typed in earth and sky and then i selected the style like you talked about and it generates an image. They're often pretty weird, which is half the fun. You know, my earth and sky image is like a bunch of, like an aerial view of a field and some trees, and then like a dark sky with maybe a moon or a sun. I can't really tell. If you don't like it, you can click generate again and it's gonna cycle through some different options. And you're gonna have to get creative how you can use this in the classroom. You know, if you're an art teacher, it's a little bit easier because obviously that's what it's, it's geared for. You can maybe use this as the, the seed of an idea for something to come. Um, and, and you know, if you're a regular classroom teacher, that's where you're gonna have to really think about the application of this. But if nothing else, it's cool to, it's cool to check out. And then, you know, the NFT connection in Fotor, if that's how you say it, is, uh, is really, really fun. So uh, I love those and I'm glad you got to share them. And it kind of fits that you just did two art ones cause I'm gonna end it with two that are focused on sound because uh, there's lots of these things out there as well. I'll start off with one that is called um, N-Synth Sound Maker. I'm pretty sure that's how you would pronounce that, N-Synth Sound Maker. Uh, this is cool, especially I was thinking about it for me and you in our podcasting class that we teach because right now we have a student who is doing a podcast that is a story, right? It's a storytelling podcast and she wants to actually bring in some sound effects. And you can find these things downloadable online, but anytime you're getting stuff off the internet, you gotta worry about, do I have permission to use it and post it, or, or do I not, right? And with Nsynth N -Synth SoundMaker, you can create your own unique sound effects that in theory have never been created before. Uh, if you go there to check it out, and the link is in our show notes, or just obviously Google N, the letter N Synth SoundMaker, it's got these two spinning wheels and on each wheel you can cycle through different types of sounds like trombone, 
harp marimba. I don't know if you can hear some of these as I'm going through right now. I'm not sure if the mics will pick it up. This is uh, marimba, there's flute, all sorts of different instruments. And um, that's just one of the wheels. And then the other wheel is different things like a dog, a cat, thunder, there's a cow, a goose, just different sounds. And then beneath that, there's a little slider bar where you can select, because what's gonna happen is these two things you're selecting. So right now I've got marimba and cow. It's gonna blend those two sounds together. So a marimba sound combined with a cow mooing. There's a, the slider bar lets you select how much of each. So it's automatically set to 50% cow, 50% marimba. You can slide it so there's more cow, less cow. And then beneath that at the way bottom are some piano keys and it plays the combination of these two sounds as different notes on the piano as you hit them. And it just makes some really, really interesting, weird, cool stuff. It's fun to play with. Any kind of audio that you're working with in your classrooms, if kids are making their own videos, you could throw them this option as a way to get some cool, unique sound effects that, that you have made and you don't have to worry about you know, stealing someone else's. So, and synth sound maker, really awesome. And then the, you know, sort of the partner to that is my last one, our last one for this episode called Sound Draw with just one D, SoundDraw.io. This is a similar thing, but for music. So if you want some music for something, a video that you're creating, uh, and again, awesome, awesome for student projects, and you don't want to have to worry about, do I have the rights to use it? Uh, SoundDraw has tons of royalty-free, non-copyrighted music that you can select and then change to make it your own based on a variety of parameters. So when you go to their website, you'll click on Create Music. And when you do that, there's just tons and tons of different sort of like, I don't know, we'll call them like bass music, like just some background set of music that you can listen to. When you click edit, then it gives you the option to change that music in a ton of different ways. You can alter the melody based on how you like. You can alter the backing, the bass, the drums. You can fill it with different spot, uh, different elements. You can change the uh, speed of it, the beats per minute. You can add in different instruments, change the key, change the volume, really make it your own, and then download it. So you've got this piece of music that you have tailored exactly to your liking and you don't have to worry about any of those copyright images. Very, very cool. The only downside to this, because I was like, well, we're going to start using this like tomorrow with our podcasting class. Uh, you do have to pay in order to download any of these things. But this uh, SoundDraw.io is so uh, powerful. This is one that I would consider actually paying for. Mostly we try to stick to the free stuff, but that's a really, really good one. So so there you go. That's uh, Those are my two sound uh, AI tools. Yeah, I think this was a great list. Uh, there's a lot of different niches within this AI-generated list. And uh, I don't know. I, I feel pretty good about it. Yeah, there's some fun stuff. I mean, a lot of this, like you said, it's, it is very niche. But I think out of what we've got here for our listeners, there might be at least one or two things that you can check out and hopefully, possibly use in your classroom. So... going to wrap it up for this episode of Got Tech. Uh, as always, everybody, please subscribe if you are a listener on Apple, preferably, but Spotify, Google, Stitcher are all great. Earlier, I mentioned our YouTube channel. You can hit us up there or on Twitter. And if you're going to do that, you might as well write us an Apple podcast review as well. That really helps. Tell us what you think. You can check out gottech.com where we post episodes and all kinds of other cool stuff. Also, tell your friends about us and the fact that we are on a network called the Teach Better Podcast Network. It's just a, a giant connection between tons of really cool educational podcasts, and you can find them by Googling the Teach Better Podcast Network and seeing what pops up. Thanks for listening.
Thanks for listening to Got Tech, the podcast. Remember to subscribe to our show and follow us at We Got Tech on Twitter so you can stay up to date with the latest episode releases, blog posts, product reviews, and PD announcements. You can also follow Geist and I individually at Geist Got Tech and at Nick Got Tech on Twitter or on Instagram at Nick Got Tech. Finally, remember to check out our website, gottech.com, where we post all our episodes, articles, and resources available to you for free. Until next time.